Summary of the Marrow Thieves by Sherry Dimeline. The book starts with the coming-of-age story of Frenchie, an 11-year-old boy who grew up in a Midas indigenous village in Canada. The story goes into detail about how he met Mig, the middle-aged Anishinaabe man who becomes like a father to Frenchie. Not too long ago, Frenchie's dad went with the council to try to get the governors to stop the terrible things that were happening at the private schools. His mom got sad, so recruiters went and got her. Mitch, Frenchie's bigger brother, and Frenchie find a bag of Doritos, but when they open it, the sound draws in recruiters. Mitch tells Frenchie to hide in a tree, and he himself jumps off a cliff. When there are no more people around, Frenchie runs north. He is sick, it is cold, and what little food he has has gone bad. Frenchie is sleeping and ready to die when Mig finds him. Frenchie is 16 now, and he and Mig have been on the run for five years. Sheboy, Wab, the twins Tree and Zigwan, Riri, Slopper, Mig, and the elder Minerva are all part of Frenchie's family. One night, Mig tells the teens that thoughts live in their bone marrow and then tells them story, the story of how the world got to where it is now. Indigenous Anishinaabe people were proud and brave warriors, but outsiders started residential schools to control them and take away their language. After those first schools closed, there was less water. As countries started fighting over water and taking it from Anishinaabe lands, the north started to melt, and natural disasters killed millions of people. Some people gave up on their dreams. Mig goes to sleep for the night. Riri asked Frenchie to tell her stories in her tent, so she did. Mig thinks she's too young to hear story, even though she wants to hear it very much. Rose shows up later that night and joins the family. Frenchie falls in love with her at once. Mig takes Frenchie and a few others hunting, which makes Frenchie feel better about himself. When he gets back, he is upset to find out that Minerva has been teaching Rose their language. A few days later, Frenchie is back with the group of hunters. When he is alone in the woods, he thinks if, if he stopped thinking, he could torture children for marrow. He faces an enormous moose, but he chooses not to shoot it. Later, Webb asks if bad things happen to people or if bad things happen because of people. Mig says that it's difficult and that, in their case, both they and the recruiters want the same thing, which is to stay alive. Wab says that she saw two guys in the woods last week, and she knew one of them to be lying. Mig's family climbs over a fence to stay at the closed Four Winds Lodge for a few nights. There, Minerva tells the girls about the Rogaru, a shapeshifting man who looked like a dog and whom she beat and then got close to. The Rogaru will curse everyone in Minerva's family. That night, Rose and Frenchie get into bed together. She tells him how she came to be. She was raised by her grandmother and then by her grandmother's uncles, William and Jonas. William and then Jonas both died, so Rose started moving north. Riri and Slopper stop them when they start to kiss. When Frenchie wakes up in the morning, his whole family is sleeping in the same room with him. Mig is ready to leave after two days. Wab is drunk and talking about how bad her mother was when Frenchie finds her. She tells the boys, Rose, and Mig her coming-of-age story. When she was 11 and still in the city, Wab was making money to eat by running texts across town. When Wab got to the place where the Indian was supposed to be dropped off, she found that it was all a setup. The man who took her letter cut Wab from her head to her chest, and a group of men raped her for two days. The run was set up by the man she saw in the woods. They find out that Riri has been hearing and is freaking out and scared because of it. Mig says it's time for her story to be told. Mig is picking up where he left off a few weeks ago. He says that pipes broke and poisoned the land, and the sun started going away for weeks at a time. People stopped dreaming, so some of them looked to the indigenous people to see if they could still dream. Somehow, the ability to dream was kept in the bone marrow of indigenous people, and the government started building new residential schools where the marrow was taken by force. Frenchie's feelings are all over the place when the group finally leaves. Riri is worried, Frenchie wishes he hadn't heard Wab's story, and Rose hasn't talked to him in days. Mig sends Frenchie up a tree to look around when the group smells smoke. 
Frenchie sees a cloud, falling trees, and a yellow thing. Mig doesn't let Frenchie tell the rest of the group, so Frenchie has to tell Mig what he saw alone. He then tells Frenchie the sad stories of how the other children found out what was going on, Riri and Slopper both lost their parents, recruiters took Minerva's grandson and raped her, and he found the twins hanging in a barn, covered in cuts and missing their pinkies. He says that the schools took away his husband, Isaac, and rubs the buffalo tattoo on his hand, which he calls his wedding ring. Mig tells the story of how he came to be. Isaac and Mig ran away to their house. Isaac was a poet and spoke Cree well. After a few months, three native people who seemed suspicious came to Isaac for protection, but he was willing to believe them. The young woman in the group showed Mig her ankle monitor, which said that recruiters were coming. Isaac didn't believe the stories and thought that they could talk to the recruiters. Mig tells Frenchie that the government is building new schools, but he doesn't want to tell the other kids because he wants to give them hope. That night, Frenchie thinks about Isaac and sees that losing people is worse than running away. Five days later, Frenchie climbs a tree and sees two men a few hours away. These are the same guys that Wab saw. They don't look like recruiters and don't move like they're being chased. Mig demands that they get in touch, and three days later, the group does. They say their names are Travis and Lincoln and that they speak Cree. Travis knows who Wab is, but he still asks the group to eat with them. When Mig hears that Travis has been to Española and will have news, he chooses to say yes. Chiboy takes Frenchie into the trees to look around. This makes Frenchie feel very grown up. When they get back to the open, they hear that there is a rebel group near Española. Travis tries to apologize for sending her on the run, which led to her getting hurt and raped. Travis and Lincoln camp with Mig's group. In the middle of the night, they hold the family at gunpoint. Lincoln, who seems drunk, puts his hands around Riri's neck and runs away with her. Frenchie follows Lincoln, Mig, and Rose and finds out that Lincoln and Riri fell off a high cliff. He runs back to the open, where Travis is, and shoots him. They pack up and run for days to get away from the recruiters, sobbing and crying the whole time. Mig tells Frenchie that after he ran away from school, he knew he had to find his way back to Isaac. He ended up in a village of Anishnaib people, where he traded with Frenchie's dad for a gun. Mig went back to the school and held a driver at gunpoint until he told him that collecting marrow kills the people. Mig found that there were a lot of labeled bottles in the back of the truck. He took the one with Isaac's bone marrow, killed the driver, and sang home the other bottles. Later, Mig's family gets to a barn where they stay the night. Recruiters find Minerva in the middle of the night and take her away. Frenchie says that they should go south, find the rebel group, and save Minerva. Frenchie is confused. His family has lost its oldest and youngest members, and being in charge of Mig and Chiboy is a lot of duty. They see syllabics, which is written language, on a tree. Rose and Frenchie find a good water stream and kiss. That night, Frenchie and his family are pulled out of their tents by people wearing bandanas. Mick can tell that one of the men in the group is older. Derek, a young man, seems to be angry that Rose and Frenchie are close. They follow their attackers to a cave where there are lots of people and a door that leads to a quiet valley. People are beginning to leave a sweat cave. Dad is the last one to leave. He presents his counsel and says that they have heard of Minerva. Their spy, Father Carol, said that when they hooked Minerva up to the machines, she started to sing. The machines broke down and the school caught on fire. After Rose worries that Frenchie will leave them now that he's found his father and Frenchie feels like he's lost his identity, they both fall asleep in Rose's tent. He wakes up in the middle of the night and sings with Mig. The next day, Frenchie feels like everything is against him. He is rude to Rose and says that his father didn't try to find him and Mitch. Derek asks Rose to dance with him at a formal dance, and Frenchie leaves. The next morning, Frenchie goes shooting with the older guys, and Clarence tells Frenchie that their land will soon be able to heal. When Frenchie gets back to camp, he is rude to Rose and looks for Dad in a sad way. 
Dad is telling Frenchie how he met Mom when Father Carol comes in and says they're moving Minerva tomorrow. Frenchie is part of the rescue group, but before they can carry out their plan, the van driver shoots Minerva. She tells Rose, Mig, and Frenchie to always go home before she dies in their arms. They put her to rest, and Rose and Frenchie both cut off their braids so they can be buried with her. Ten days are spent with the group. The council starts putting together what they know about their language and stories and makes a young council to teach them. Rose makes the choice to leave the group. Frenchie hides so he doesn't have to say goodbye, thinking that Mig and Dad should be enough of a family for him. Dad, on the other hand, lets Frenchie go after Rose and look for his own idea of home. When Frenchie gets there, Rose is already there. Before Frenchie and Rose can kiss, Derek runs by and distracts them. Then they see two Guyanese women, a guy who looks like he is Cree, and two pale men. One of the pale guys is really Cree. He speaks the language well and even thinks in it. They go on this trip, and on the way back to camp, Frenchie notices that the man has a tattoo of a bull on the back of his hand. This is Isaac. When Mig and Isaac get back together, Frenchie laughs and cries, and he learns that they'll do anything to reach their goals. About the author Sherry Dimoline is a member of the Georgian Baymetis Society in Ontario, Canada. The Georgian Baymetis are an ethnic group with roots in both the First Nations and European farmers. She spent her summers as a child in the Metis village, where she learned the traditional Metis stories, which she says directly affected her book The Marrow Thieves. Her first novel, Red Rooms, came out in 2011, but The Marrow Thieves has been her most famous and well-received book. It won the Governor General's Award for English Language Children's Literature, the Kirkus Prize, and was a finalist in the Canada Reads competition. Dimoline has written books and short stories, and she was also the editor-in-chief of the first issue of Muskrat magazine. She has also taken part in residency programs at the Toronto Public Library. She lives with her husband and children in Toronto. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.